Everyone, thanks for joining us in the Navient Credit Union Broadcast Center. I am joined by best-selling author Jane Green. It's such a pleasure to be speaking with her today. So she has uh, 17 best-selling novels to her name, all from the New York Times, and she is releasing The Sunshine Sisters. It's available uh, in stores tomorrow, but of course you can pre-order them now. So Miss Jane Green, thank you so much for joining us today via Skype. Oh, thank you for having me. So um, it's such a privilege to talk to you. You have sold over 10 million books uh, and published them in over 25 languages. And you will be speaking at an unlikely story in Plainville, Mass. this Friday at 1 p.m. Uh, so we're getting a chance to talk to you before you come over to this neck of the woods, but you're not too far away in Connecticut. Yeah, that's right. So let's talk a little bit about your book, The Sunshine Sisters. Um, it all revolves around this glamorous Ronnie Sunshine and her three daughters. Just tell us a little bit about your inspirations for this story. So, um, gosh, my inspirations. Well, I started off, I, I wanted to write a story about sisters. I always wanted sisters. Um, I have a younger brother who I adore, but it's not quite the same as having sisters. And I decided it was time for me to write a story about sisters and I wanted these three girls who were each very different from from each other um and I gave them this very difficult mother Ronnie Sunshine who is a, a sort of b-movie um star and and actress an English actress who moves to Hollywood to become famous in the 70s and she's a terrible mother she's self-absorbed and narcissistic and selfish and doesn't have a maternal bone in her body so these three girls grow up really not knowing what it is to have to have a, a mother who loves them unconditionally and they become not only estranged from each other but they become estranged from their mother and we we follow them throughout their childhood actually and we get to see glimpses into their their worlds as children and teenagers and young women and then we finally meet them in the present day when Ronnie's sunshine is diagnosed with a terminal illness and she invites these girls that really have had no relationship back to their childhood home to try and right some of the wrongs and bring them back together so we just cover after all and you're so deeply involved in your characters many of your stories have been um, I read that you actually put this book aside and later came back to it. Did, did putting the book aside help you dig into your characters more or, or was, it, was it hard to set them aside? Um, you know, the funny thing is I wrote a third of the book and the reason I set it aside was because I felt I didn't really know the characters. And I thought, well, the book isn't very good. I'm just going to shelve it and I'll write something else. So I, I put it to one side and I wrote Falling, um, which is actually paperback now, but I wrote Falling instead. And a year went by and I went back to the Sunshine Sisters and I thought, I just need to check to make sure there's nothing there. And I started reading it and I thought, God, there are, there are parts of this that are really good, actually. And suddenly, having... Have that started to be realizing that I actually had drawn these characters far better than I thought I had, um, and I decided then to go back into um, go back to their childhoods. So that was when I started writing about their past, which really gave me a much better handle on who they who they were. Oh, that is, that's so intriguing, and it's so nice to be able to get some insight when you're reading the book and then to figure out how you kind of delved into it. Um, and it, it's such an interesting story, uh, and, you, and you make the characters relatable, and I think that's so neat what you do to kind of all your characters. Um, and I'm kind of wondering if, if that's how you kind of have made staying power, is that you're able to find characteristics about your characters that people can relate to, whether it's that they have uh, a, a mother that they just don't see eye to eye with, or because mm -hmm. someone in their family has terminal illness, or because they're ha having an affair with someone, or do you think that's kind of just why 
why readers love you so much and have come to know and love your book so much? I think that I think um, yes. I, I I think you you've got you've hit something. And the way that I always think of it is, uh, what I'm trying to do is write is write with an emotional honesty. So whether you've been through it or you haven't, you still are able to put yourself into those character shoes. And the other thing is that I write with the tremendous amount of empathy and a lack of judgment because I truly believe that in this life we are all doing the best that we can and we all make mistakes whether it's screaming at our children when when we love them and don't want to be doing that whether it's um um you know even having affairs I mean that you know one of the daughters is having an affair and and it's terrible and we want to hate her for what she's doing to her husband and yet there is something about her that we we can almost understand it we don't condone it but we we can understand it and and i think i think that's where you show women like us with all our flaws and 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 figure out how we're all essentially looking for the same thing which is peace and happiness and a place to call home and if it can happen for them it can happen for us too and the way you describe that is so lovely uh, all the sisters are so different and, uh, of course, trying to stand apart from their mother as well. Um, what was it like to give them all a personality all of their own? Uh, these sisters just spoke to me, and they were all so distinct. I mean, you know, I did quite a lot of reading about sisters and the dynamic, and children, the dynamic between first, second, and third, you know, the, the middle child being the people pleaser, babies was the eldest being the leader and and i think with that in mind i was able to really develop their characters and uh, but, but they sort of became a very strong quiet reserved one and it's only when we meet her in present day and we see how her life suddenly she she falls in love with somebody completely unexpected that we understand where her reserve has come from and the sort of fear that she's fear and shame that she's that she's pushed down for so long um and then uh, meredith is the people pleaser so she's the one who's always trying to please her mother and everyone else so she finds herself engaged to a man that she's slowly realizing she hates um and then there's lizzie who's the youngest who's the chef who's in not absolutely tan selfish and self-absorbed, spoiled rotten, the most like her mother, who, who just treats people horribly and, and there are never any consequences until there are. <laughs> until there are. Uh, yeah. And it is, it's it's quite a book and you've done it once again <laughs> with so many books to your oh. name. I was going through your website and just counting over and over and over again. Um, so not only uh, all of these books to your name and 17 best-selling books on the New York Times site. But you write a blog on your website as well, so it's so fun just to get to see that and you have a social media presence as well. Uh, is writing just part of who you are? Is it is it almost hard to just hold it back? Um, mm, uh, you know, yes and no. Writing is, it, it was my profession before I started writing novels. I was a journalist. I always wrote stories as a child. It's very much how I figure out how I see the world. Um, having said that, it is not the romantic, um, you know, news led profession that we like to think it is. You, there are days when it is. There are days when I sit down at the typewriter and I can see these worlds unfolding in my head and it's just blowing out through my fingertips. But there are more days when I sit in front of an empty screen and I think, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> no, I've got nothing. I don't even know how to fill a page, let alone, you know, 400 pages. And the trick that I've learned is more than anything else, discipline. Writing requires tremendous discipline that even when you think you've got nothing to say you just anyway because eventually that creativity will be unlocked and will come back well you 
certainly must have quite a bit of discipline to do this so many times and to do it well so many times. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about, because not only are you super talented in your writing and your discipline, but you have a cookbook, and what's so neat about this event that you have coming up at Unlikely Stories, you'll be discussing the Sunshine Sisters, but it's a lunch, and so they'll be incorporating some recipes from your cookbook, Good Taste. So, um, talk to me just a little bit about what you love about cooking and what it was like for you to put together a cookbook. Well, it was a very different experience to the novels because the novels are completely solitary. I sit by my head in my office and I write my novels. And the cookbook was a team effort. So I found you know, a wonderful photographer and an art director and put together this, this amazing cookbook. And I have to be honest, I I am a cook. I always describe myself as a slightly trained chef when I went to the French Culinary Institute. So I can cook, but I it's not really about the food for me. It's it's about the experience of welcoming people into my home. And the minute they cross the threshold and walk in, I want them to feel nurtured and safe. And I want to sit them down at my kitchen table and feed them the kind of love. That's really what it is. And so it's comfort food and it's easy. There are all, all the recipes are easy and delicious because we're all busy and nobody has the time to slave over for a hot stove, but we want our food to taste as if it has. So um, so it's all the recipes from my life. I, Many of my mothers and my mothers, um, many I've created, collected, but they're all just foolproof. Oh, I love that. I, I absolutely love that. And I love that the event is kind of incorporating both. Um, I do want to talk to you be before we go, two, two more things. Um, Deadline reported in January that uh, Good Deed Entertainment acquired the rights for your novel, The Beach House, which you have said is um, one of your favorite books. And you'll receive executive producer credit and act as a writing consultant. Uh, I'm just wondering if you can fill us in on what the status of that project is. Um, so I have just, um, a couple of weeks, it's the first draft of the script, um, and I went through and it's kind of delightful, actually. It's, um, it's a really odd experience reading a script that somebody else has written, um, and, and seeing your characters brought to life, because of course, when you write it, you'll not quite see it, but when somebody else has written it, it I thought it was an absolute delight. And in fact, today, I'm reading the script of Tempting Fate, um, which has been sold to Lifetime. So um, so there are lots of, of you know movie and TV things going on, which is wonderful. And again, it's the same experience. It's amazing to see the characters that, that I created and say things that I didn't give them, but, <laughs> but they're absolutely right for their characters. Um, and I'm loving it. I'm having a blast just seeing what other people are doing with my with my people, my friends. It has to be so exciting, but also kind of odd to see what other people do with the people that you created. Well, well, you know, I, I the writers sort of bemoan the fact that once they sold it, they had no control over it. And but I, my feeling is. You know, I have to trust that these other people are talented and good at, at what they do, and, and it seems they are, um, and they're doing a, a really wonderful job. Well, congratulations to you. That's that's very exciting. Um, and then I'm a very big animal rescue advocate, and I realize that you enjoy saving a furry friend as well. So, <laughs> so I'm wondering if you have any recent members of the family that you've added to or, or any fun stories you'd like oh, to share. <laughs> I think my husband would divorce me if I brought anything else home. Um, we have, what are we up to? We have six children, two dogs, five cats, six chickens, uh, one rabbit and one fish. So we did So we did have a rabbit called Chester the Molester who we had to rehome only because Stan the rabbit was not a fan. Um, but I, I'm slightly James for another little book saying no, we can't. And of course he has to say that because he's the one that ends up looking after all of those creatures. So bless my husband's heart. I, I'm going to give him a break. 
canal. Oh, well, what a wonderful spirit you have to you to, to take in so many <laughs> beloved animals, so appreciate that. Uh, Miss oh. Jane Green, the novel is The Sunshine Sisters. It's an excellent story, and you delve into the characters beautifully, as always, so we appreciate you being here. You'll be in Plainville, Mass., at an unlikely story, 1 o'clock, it's a lunch, and you'll get to meet Miss Jane Green. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time, and it's been wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much. Aww, thank you.